Good day, everyone. It is my pleasure to be here with you to moderate this session, Greece as Logistics Gateway Connecting Europe. The session will be divided in three sections. We will hear introductory remarks from Deputy Minister of Infrastructure and Transportation of Greece, Mr. Janis Kefalogiannis followed by technical remarks by, remarks by Luis Blancas from the World Bank. And then in the last section, we'll be at 30, we will hear from a 30 minute panel discussion among panelists and our speakers. The panelists have been selected among private sector and academia, and I will introduce them before each of the sections. Let me just give some context of why this um, session is so important. It comes at a critical point in the future economic trajectory of Europe, as efforts to build back better post-COVID-19 pandemic are bringing a natural realignment of supply, of supply chains and supply management practices to meet a very clear challenge, reducing uncertainty in freight logistics while increasing resilience of trade corridors. Currently, the transport sector is responsible for approximately 25% of the greenhouse gas emissions around the world, out of which around 45 are freight related. The operational efficiency of the sector is critical to reduce countries' carbon print. Greece is aiming to do so under three specific areas, inland logistics, intermodal connectivity and digitalization of corridors and related infrastructure. As the country invests in infrastructure, this opens up the opportunity for decarbonization of the freight industry, consistent with the goals of the European Green Deal. Trade depends on harnessing efficiency in the transport sector, while at the same time, those efficiencies are the best way to address the challenges posed by climate change, particularly in the freight industry. And last, let me say that Greece has the opportunity to play a significant role as a gateway for Central Europe, a provider of value-added logistic services in its own right, and as an enabler of efficient long-haul cross-border multimodal logistics in the region, all of which is related to a greener and multimodal transportation system in Greece and its extended cargo hinterlands. Beyond its own domestic agenda and that of neighboring countries, intercontinental market such as Asia and elsewhere, elsewhere will benefit from Greece's focus on energy efficiency and efficiency gains and on greening the freight logistics system. So with that, let me introduce our first speaker, Deputy Minister Kefalogiannis. He is lawyer by training, undertook graduate studies at Columbia University and Harvard University, thus very familiar with the North American context, something that he shares with Greece's prime minister. He was member of parliament in Greece from 2012 and uh, all the way to 2015. And he has a very rounded career in the public sector with foreign affairs and national defense expertise. Now appointed as Deputy Minister for Infrastructure and Transportation. Over to you, Deputy Minister. Thank you. Uh, good morning to all, and I'm very happy and honored to be among uh, such honorable speakers. Uh, sharing my views on such a very interesting topic. So, uh, positioning Greece as an international logistics gateway 
has been a strategic objective of the Greek state for several years now. The geographical location of Greece gives the country a significant advantage as a trade route between Asia and Europe. As maritime transport remains the backbone of international trade, Greece's role as a major interface for Europe is becoming more visible to prominent stakeholders. The Port of Piraeus, following its uh, privatization over the last decade, has been uh, transformed through massive investments in a highly competitive end-to-end -end alternative connection to Asian ports for major global business players when compared to North European ports in terms of uh, transport uh, duration, reliability, frequency of service and cost. Moreover, the local presence of uh, the largest ship owning community in, in the world, Greece's extensive new road uh, network, part of the 10T road network, connecting uh, Southeast Europe to major industrial centers in uh, Central Europe, and the existence of uh, modernized logistics uh, facilities gathered in regional logistics clusters, offers a window of opportunity for Greece to become a competitive international freight and logistics center. There is data evidence for this, since Greece has been gradually improving its international ranking with regards to trade competitiveness and logistics performance. However, in most of these uh, indices, Greece continues to lag behind its principal trading competitors. More work will be needed with regards to rail freight transport, Netherlands logistics and the interconnectivity of the Greek transport and logistics industry. To our understanding, in the Ministry of Infrastructure and Transport, in order to increase its attractiveness as a leading regional logistics hub, Greece will need to focus on at least two key issues. One of our first priorities is, of course, the completion of uh, an efficient rail freight market. We're aware of that in terms of accessibility, quality of infrastructure and intermodal connectivity with other transport modes, major stakeholders take a rather negative view, suggesting therefore that uh, this should be the next big steps in order to meet international standards. In this respect, I'm happy to announce that the significant investments in the electrification and the signals of the rail network are nearing completion, such as the adoption of the European train control system, which uh, will allow further production increase and cost reduction. Regarding interconnectivity, new projects are being planned for connecting rail network with all main frame ports, namely Thessaloniki, Volos and Kavala, as well as with the important freight and industrial areas in the hinterland. In addition, we are working to find solutions or at least three significant structural distortions in the railway freight market that need to be addressed in the foreseeable future, particularly the lack of available locomotives that will permit rail freight companies to increase significantly their workload a shortage of train drivers, a result mostly of a slow-paced and uh, discontinued practical training, which in turn derives from the scarcity of uh, functional rolling stock. And finally, the rationalization of uh, charges for the use of train infrastructure. Starting from the latter, we firmly believe that user charges based on uh, marginal costs ensure the optimum effective use of available infrastructure capacity. Given the railway undertakings need predictable charging systems. I am pleased to announce that very soon we will present to our stakeholders and the investment community a 10 year growth friendly charging plan based on the costs directly incurred by the train service. Furthermore, it is our explicit intention to invest via GEOSE SA in a new rolling stock considering in particular appropriate technologies complementary to e-mobility, such as hybrid and hydrogen technology, as well as in the revamping of the existing one to be used exclusively for the development of the rail freight market. For this latter purpose, we are investigating, along with the major international stakeholders, new investments in rolling stock maintenance facilities too. A second key priority for the Ministry of Infrastructure and Transport 
is the development of a complete freight transit centers. So far, no such logistics hubs has been established in Greece. In the Attica region, the Thriasio Logistics Center, TLC, is about to take off pending final approvals from Digicomp and is expected to be the core of intermodal transport in Greece in the near future, given its uh, vicinity to the Piraeus port, as well as the fact that uh, multiple modes of uh, freight transport, railway vehicles, can be employed. Upon completion, it will become one of the most important modern intermodal freight and logistics parks in Southeast Europe. Moreover, a new bidding process for a second PPP in the same location, Thriasio 2, an intermodal terminal station to be developed adjacent to TLC, is expected to be initiated by June 2021. With regards to the Central Macedonia region, the process for the development of the GONOS logistics centers in Thessaloniki has been initiated. We consider the establishment of GONOS camp to be one of uh, geostrategic importance as it concerns not only the Greek market, but also the broader Balkan one. As in the TLC case, the project is enjoying unique advantages, such as the closeness to the Thessaloniki port, only eight kilometers, and the multiple transport, railway, and track capabilities. Finally, I'm glad to announce that we are ready to conduct a pre-feasibility study for the establishment of a third logistic hub in Central Greece in the region of Thessaly, near Larissa, to be deployed in the existing facilities of the former sugar refinery. To sum up, we are convinced that uh, without fulfilling those two main conditions, the whole discussion about transforming Greece into an international logistics getaway will remain theoretical. In the use of the years to come, we are determined to capitalize Greece's prospects, entering the top 30 countries in the LPI index in the next five years and the top 20 countries at the end of the current decade. To accomplish this, we should aim both government and stakeholders at solid targets which should be translated into concrete and measurable results. Concerning government, further privatization of ports, the deployment of hinterland logistics in carefully selected areas, the improvement of connection with existing and new road and rail infrastructure, and the digitalization of custom services will offer clear and measurable benefits to the country's economy. We do expect that all major players of the logistics market will support critical business size, invest in digital transformation and automation of their operation, create synergies and joint ventures, particularly between 3PL, 4PL companies, and establish even further their presence in Southeastern Europe. I believe that this is the only way for our country to achieve outstanding ratings and become an even more competitive regional European freight and logistics hub. Thank you. Thank you, um, Deputy Minister. We will get back to you um, during the question and, and answers um, segment after we hear from our, our panelists. Thank you very much for your remarks. Now, let us hear from Luis Blancas uh, with a technical presentation. Luis is a senior transport specialist from the World Bank with experience in three continents, Asia, Latin America, and Europe. He has been leading the waterways agendas, freight logistics at the global level, and more recently in Europe and Central Asia, he has been designing and delivering the logistics agenda for our clients in Europe. Over to you, Luis. Thank you very much, Carla, for your introduction and Deputy Minister Kefalogianis for your remarks. Um, I will take a few minutes to talk about our view of uh, Greece's opportunities and challenges in international logistics uh, based on our uh, uh, experience partnering with the government of Greece um, on these issues. Uh, I uh, hmm. was going to share some slides, which I'm not totally sure how to do. Uh, yes, I'll just. Um, I'll, I'll guess I'll, I'll just. I'll just speak uh, just directly 
um, uh, just give, give the messages directly, and, I, and I'll uh, uh, describe uh, some of what I was going to show. But it, it's 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 okay. It's uh, it's just uh, the main messages in any case. Um, uh, we, we've been uh, we've been really impressed with uh, with the progress that Greece has done uh, uh, over the past uh, really now 15 years. It's now a long time. It's not nothing new now um, uh, in in the in the realm of logistics. Uh, uh, particularly in, in our view, one of the uh, events that really changed the trajectory the, uh, of, of Greek logistics was the. Uh, the, the most visible, anyway, the most visible um, event was, of, of course, the arrival of, uh, first of all, the, the adoption of the land or poor model uh, sector, uh, uh, governance model for the poor sector in 07, that then paved the way for the entrance of um, uh, world class ter uh, terminal operator Pireos uh, as Costco. And that really, that really uh, changed, you know, it was a, a before and after kind of event with tremendous growth uh, positioning Pireos as a global transshipment hub. Uh, with implications for global trade. Between 2008 and 2013, for example, uh, the throughput of Pireos was growing at almost 50% per year. During those years, uh, Pireos was the fastest growing large port in the world. Um, and and even after that, continue, the growth has continued at 10% you know, plus per year. Um, uh, during, during the 2020, Year that was impacted by the pandemic, there was some some slippage in volumes, which is uh, which are understandable because of the impact of the pandemic globally. Uh, but nevertheless, the growth has been tremendous, um, and uh, international connectivity, maritime connectivity, of Greece has improved in the same in the same way. Um, uh, at the same time, it's very important for us uh, to uh, emphasize the uh, progress that Greece, Greece has made in terms of. Not only the physical progress, but also in terms of reforms and adoption of reforms for the transport and logistics market. I mentioned uh, that this all started with the adoption of the landlord uh, uh, poor model of governance for maritime ports, which is aligned with global best practice and the best practice of Europe. But then that was followed by several other reforms that were passed as well. Um, uh, for example, we saw the uh, uh, complete al uh, alignment of the of the uh, railway sector with the EU acquis between 2010 and 2013. Uh, we saw adoption of the logistics sector law in 2014. We saw privatization, the privatization, of course, effort to privatize Pirates Port Authority. Um, the uh, public railway company in 2017, the Saloniki Port Authority in 2018. Um, and even in the just last, uh, uh, just most recently in 2019, a bilateral agreement uh, with China for further in, uh, investments in Peru. So these are all very, very positive. Uh, one thing that I, that I, we will also, from the World Bank's perspective, be very impressed with uh, in terms of Greece's performance. It's a very, uh, it's a very well managed. Uh, uh, the, the, the way that the you're just looking at the maritime maritime portion of the logistics sector specifically in Puerto Pireos, the way it has been managed by the terminal operator in conjunction with the government of Greece has been very judicious. Uh, we've seen across the world, um, uh, certainly over the past 10 years, uh, for many reasons, uh, almost a rush uh, in investments in ports uh, in many countries that have led in many cases to oversupply, for example, an overinvestment on oversupply, which then can be destabilizing for uh, the host country as well as the neighboring countries trading partners and we have not seen this in Greece on the country you've seen very judicious very responsible um, uh, very uh, kind of, kind of well-managed approach to the capacity expansion of Porto Pireos of course Porto Pireos has seen significant capacity expansion since um, uh, the arrival of the new terminal operator from 1.8 million TEU capacity uh, in 2008 to uh, 7.2 million TEU capacity in 2020, expected to go up uh, uh, in, 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 the, in the near term to up to 8 million TU and then beyond. But this has been done in a very judicious way, uh, always, always related to the underlying volumes. Right? All those, there's always a, there's a, 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 a rule of thumb, thumb almost used by terminal operators around the world that says that once terminal uh, utilization reaches approximately 70%, then at that point they start uh, developing new capacity, and we've seen that rule almost applied to a T uh, at Porto Pireos, which we are happy to see. Um, Deputy Please, Minister you mentioned have, you have one more minute. 
Thank you, Carla. The Deputy Minister mentioned Greece's performance in the Logistics Performance Index and some goals for, for Greece, which are very positive. What, what I would like to highlight on the LPI position in Greece, which on the one hand, yes, it's true, as the Deputy Minister mentioned, that Greece trails several of its uh, uh, European uh, peers as well as competitors. It is also true that between 2010 and 2018, Greece is among the countries, all countries in Europe, that uh, uh, the improve their performance the most relative to the best performer in Europe, which is Germany, which is very positive. Um, and lastly, going forward, we think that Greece has an opportunity to more deeply embed logistics in its economic performance. Greece has, 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 has been able to achieve uh, improvements in logistics performance, but there's still an opportunity to, to deepen the, the impact of logistics in the economic performance of Greece. Um, by balancing, you know, infrastructure provision with service delivery, but, but for example, better mapping the central European hinterland, which is the main target market uh, for Greece by investing, as the Deputy Minister said, and we fully agree, in multimodal logistics clusters inland, such as Triasio, um, uh, that domestically coordinating investments in infrastructure with improvements in expansion in rail and road service connections, and finally, internationally coordinating these investments with uh, the neighboring countries of Greece, particularly in the Western Balkans, to better enable that corridor that will link uh, that links and can better better link Greece with uh, with Central Europe. And in this, the World Bank is also active because we are investing in, investing in the Western Balkans for better connectivity uh, a, 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 a long, particularly along Corridor 10, the Pan-European Corridor 10. Let me stop here and we'll be happy to uh, participate in Q&A se se session later. Thank you very much, Carla. Indeed, Luis, we will have more time to discuss. Uh, as we're getting into the last or third segment of this session, let me introduce the three panel members uh, to discuss precisely what uh, we have heard already from, I'm sorry, I think, yes, yes, uh, um, I thought I'd get disconnected. To hear uh, precisely what um, their views, what they have over here from uh, Deputy Minister and, and from Ritz. So let me first uh, go to uh, Gunter Ferk. Uh, Gunter, I would like to introduce your name just in one second uh let me just go back to my notes i'm sorry about that gunter is the head of rail logistics division for vtg rail logistics in germany a logistics company based in hamburg and uh, he will share with us for the next five minutes his views in in related to um the presentations from deputy minister and Luis. Then Thomas Karg, member of the board of Rail Cargo Austria. And then we will hear from Professor Athanasios Siliaskopoulos, chairman and national logistic of National Logistics Committee and former CEO and chairman of the board of Train OSE, the Greek incumbent national rail, uh, railway operator. So uh, first, uh, let, let us hear for, uh, of you or from you, uh, Gunter. Yeah, Carla, thank you very much. Um, thank you for, for the invitation, um, dear Deputy Minister, dear colleagues. First of all, I have to admit that um, I've been working uh, in, let's say, in the region of Balkan, Greece, um, for more than 20 years. But I never heard in these 20 years the developments and the investment programs um, which were introduced by the Deputy Minister and I'm very happy that um, Greece is taking this position because, in my opinion, uh, Greece has an extreme high geopolitical advantage for the flows, for the cargo flow from east, but also from west. I think, if I'm not mistaken, the advantage lays between 10 and 12 days uh, in terms of uh, savings in days in transit for the goods, going, uh, stopping in, in Greece, um, in Piraeus, or going up to Antwerp or to Hamburg. This is the advantage. Unfortunately, the disadvantage is that on the landway, on the railway paths, I would say, on the corridors, it takes, I would say, five to six days to come to Central Europe, to Hungary, to Czech Republic, to Austria. So, and I think this is um, a topic um, which was already addressed 
according uh, to the um, um, deputy minister. Um, let me give you two or three sentences about um, rail logistics, about VTG. Um, actually, we are not only a pure forwarder. VTG is basically divided into three sectors, and I will come to this a little bit later. Um, we have, in, in let's say, in our sister company, we have around 94,000 railway wagons. Out of that, around 80, 85,000 are in Europe. And we are supplying all the major, let's say, customers, railway undertaking, four waters with rolling stock. So we have also quite um, a big portion of our rolling stock in, in Greece for one of our customers already. The second division is dealing with containers, with tank containers, chemical transport worldwide. Quite important, I would say, as port of Piraeus um, for the inbound and outbound of, uh, of Europe. The third division, which I am responsible for, I mean, we are the forwarder, yeah, but we have the access to, to assets. We are assets light, but our sister companies are quite asset heavy, if you, as you can um, imagine. Allow me the comparison uh, of the forwarder with an architect. Both are designing, plan and supervising. Um, and we also take into the account um, the technical, economical, but also the environment, um, environmental requirements from the customers mainly. Um, we as a forwarder, or in general the forwarding industry, um, are trying to fulfill exactly the above mentioned or the, the prior mentioned requirements. We try to, to build transport chains according to the needs of, of the customers. Since we are not the owners of infrastructure, since we are not the owners of assets, yeah, our sister company, but basically um, they are supplying uh, our demands, we can modulate, we can build the best possible chains, transport chains for our, for our, for our customers. Not alone, no, together with our partners. Some of the partners or some of one of the partners is also in this panel here, which uh, we, are, we are, let's say, um, including um, their, their um, offerings into, into the, 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 the transport chains uh, from and to, to Greece. And I think this is important to say that uh, we need to have a quite um, good and solid base of, of re reliable suppliers. What we are missing, uh, especially in, in Greece, and therefore I was really happy to hear from the Deputy Minister all the, the initiatives, all the investments. If we want to, let's say, move cargo from or to Greece, we have some challenges still. And then in this market for, as I mentioned, over 20 years. We are missing uh, a lot of, uh, I would say, customer sightings. There are basically not so many sightings where you can directly connect customers. That means uh, none of the refineries, if I'm not mistaken, are, are rail connected. Unfortunately, there are not so many warehouses or distribution centers rail connected. Actually, there are not so many distribution centers, as we can see, let's say, in other important ports um, going west or north of, of, uh, of Euros, Europe. We have a significantly lack uh, in terms of um, railway path electrici electricity. It's not electrified. That means uh, this leads to mm, some yeah, higher cost because you need to change the local. Um, and also the condition and the availability of, of the existing and domestic rail path is not op at the optimum, put it this way. There are a lot Walter, of, let I me, would say... Let, let me um, stop you here, if, if we can discuss this further, because we are running out of time to hear from the rest of the, of the panelists. Of course. Would that, would that be okay? And then we can come back to you during the that, that's okay. questions. That's fine. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Let us hear now from uh, uh, um, Carl, uh, Thomas Carl. We would like to hear from you 
for the next four minutes your remarks uh, after what you have heard from uh, the speakers. Thank you. Yeah, very warm welcome from the side of Vienna as well. Um, personally, I'm convinced that uh, after the pandemic of, of coronavirus, we will be faced in a period, I would say it's a ticket of, of, of railway, yeah? uh, because uh, the slogan, the Green Deal will come back on stage again. And uh, there will be some challenges. Yeah? So, so to utilize the existing infrastructure, it needs some, some kind of, of uh, yeah, seamless operation for the efficient use of the assets. Yeah? So uh, as the deputy minister said, it, it takes, uh, there is a need for more uh, interoperability for, for, for locomotives, for assets. And it's um, very important, a high level of interoperability to, to cross the borders, harmonization of uh, the processes, one side, the customs processes for the vessels coming uh, from Asia into Piraeus and then further in the heart of Europe. But it also needs a um, harmonization of uh, the regularities of the railway. Yeah? So this means that uh, the local drivers can cross the borders without any problem. And uh, altogether, this is called this international dispatch. Yeah? This is exactly where um, the railway is losing uh, against the truck when we're talking about this, this uh, competitive situation. And out of this efficiency, um, there will be a cost saving, a massive cost saving, which helps a lot uh, for using, for utilizing the infrastructure more than it is right now. Now, um, the, next, the next step is that uh, a balance, a balance, uh, let's say, from Greece into the heart of Europe and from the heart of Europe uh, to Greece, this balance uh, needs to be filled. So uh, at the moment, the filling rate is a bit different. It's, um, so this is, we have a lot of empty runs in between, uh, which is not helping uh, the competitive situation against all the other transport modes as well. Yeah? Um, now, one thing is clear that, that uh, to this, 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 let's say, century, uh, center of, of, of digitalization, yeah? helps also to harmonize these, these processes in a way that um, uh, algorithm, which uh, is intelligent for, for dispatching, for planning and, and for using the assets in an efficient way, um, these all together will bring the railway service between Greece and, and, and the rest of Europe in the, ne in the next level. And, and uh, this will not happen between the next five weeks. It's, it's, it takes a little bit time. But as I understood, Greece is ready to invest. Uh, so all the other logistic companies as well. When I'm looking at Günther, uh, VTG is very active in this corridor. So we as a rail company are also very active. And uh, from European point of view, the way to Southeast Europe is uh, a very important one, very important to stabilize the economy once again. And uh, Greece has a very important uh, place in this role um in a way that uh, there is a connection via Piraeus from Asia and the Asian economy is uh, definitely a welcome support for the European economy especially after the crisis and the pandemic thanks thank you uh thank you very much we are hearing so far about the importance of reliability um the international dispatch the importance of railways connectivity the gaps uh, that, that are there out of the lack of logistic centers. So um, let us hear now from uh, Professor, um, the, the, from Professor Silias Kopoulos, uh, your views on, uh, on what, what you are hearing so far from the rest of the speakers, but also with your experience, your vast experience in the country. How do you see these challenges moving forward? 
Thank you, Carl. And I would like to express my gratitude to the World Bank and yourself and Luis for organizing the session on logistics and transport in Greece. Uh, and the opportunity, of course, for me to present uh, the, the views of the, of the Logistics Council to, uh, in, the, in this forum. Uh, Greece is definitely in a transition to, become, to becoming a more competitive uh, country. Uh, and of course, the, the logistics and uh, the global supply chains that uh, we are opting to, to, to attract through Greece um, need initiatives like the initiatives that Deputy Minister Kefalogiannis just uh, announced today. Uh, leveling the field, uh, leveling the field on the railways, uh, it's extremely important. And I believe that uh, he just touched on every single point from um, uh, uh, you know, deploy, for training more drivers, uh, deploying uh, a 10-year plan for uh, infrastructure charges so that the operators know exactly what they will be uh, dealing with for the next 10 years, which is, I believe is unprecedented in Europe. Uh, nobody can find this kind of, of stability in terms of infrastructure charges. And of course, um, uh, developing those intermodal facilities that uh, also the previous uh, the other speakers mentioned on uh, intermodal ch interchanges uh, uh, between both at the ports and also with uh, uh, at the factories and the roadway uh, mode. Um, one thing I just wanted to add uh, in terms of uh, also uh, some of the uh, uh, connectivity initiatives is there is an initiative from a major refinery to connect to the railways, uh, which is motor oil refinery in, uh, in Attica. Uh, and connecting to this is uh, one of the major refineries in, uh, in the Balkans. And connecting to, to the railways is going to bring a lot of um, chemicals and petroleum products uh, on the railways. And of course, in leveling the field, uh, another important uh, initiative that I need to, to, to just mention is that uh, the maintenance of the rolling stock, uh, which is at this point is not quite um, easy in Greece. Uh, so, um, and um, creating, create, leveling the field in this way, and also through GEOSE providing, uh, providing uh, rolling stock, uh, would definitely lower the barrier to entry into the Greek market uh, for the railway sector. Um, now, uh, besides, uh, besides um, all these uh, great initiatives that will take place in the next few years, I would like to mention also that uh, there is an unprecedented uh, digitalization um, effort and digitalization transformation increase that has, uh, that was unimaginable a few years ago. In two years, effectively, we managed to change the whole public sector. Uh, today, it's much easier to create, uh, to incorporate an SA. You can do it in a few minutes through the government's website, and then it's going to take you probably two weeks to get a bank account for this one. So we're ahead even of the private sector in that regard. And uh, it, it Greece has advantages and it's becoming more and more competitive country. But there are also disadvantages that we need to recognize and deal with head on. Um, we, we are not, we are not um, uh, Rotterdam, we are not Netherlands, we are not Belgium. Uh, we don't have Germany and France next to us. Uh, we, are, we are very close to Suez Canal, but we have a long distance from Central Europe. And the previous um, uh, speakers mentioned the problems with that. The only way to get your shipments out of the Greek ports are, is a railway. You cannot empty a port with a truck, uh, with tracking. Uh, so to be able to do that more efficiently, we need initiatives also in the, in the Balkan, beyond Greece, in the whole Western and Central European area. Uh, we need to promote, and this is probably has to be a government and the European initiative, and no local change through the Balkans. We, we are training now drivers. There is shortage of drivers in, uh, in Austria. Well, Greek drivers potentially can drive trains in, in, in there too. And I think that would, be, that would be welcomed by somebody like Rail Cargo Austria. Uh, so we, we, have to, we have to take initiatives on interoperability issues and no local change so that 
there is we minimize those delays that are unnecessary for the um, uh, for for moving the shipments. Um, and of course, uh, we we need we need to, to look again at the private sector, the Greek private sector, the logistics sector. We have, and I'm gonna say only this, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna finish. We have the biggest merchant fleet, the, uh, the second biggest merchant fleet in the world, but we don't have a major logistics and supply chain management company in Greece. And the reason for that is that the merchants are more like ship owners. They are not really supply chain managers. And we really need to work on that one. We need a big, uh, I don't know, a Union Agile or a Debeshenker in Greece. Or if I follow you. Here. Thank you. Um, I think that uh, we are going to have now uh, a very interesting period of uh, questions and answers that uh, that will allow us to round it, the ideas that I needed to um, ask you to short, to cut short before. And I'm, I'm very sorry about that, but uh, it was the only way for us to hear from 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 all of you. So with that, uh, first of all, uh, let me let me um, uh, say thank you to the Deputy Minister for staying with us all this all this time. And uh, we would like to hear from you um, the challenges that you think, uh, the difficulties that you think that these actions, especially the actions towards a much more um, interoperability uh, with railways uh, that you have described to us, um, which, which are the challenges for the country to bring these actions on board uh, in the long uh, or in the short term? Thank you, Carla. That's uh, that's an excellent uh, question. Um, I'm convinced that uh, a, a deep trade and uh, transport integration between Greece and its uh, neighboring countries, especially those in the Western Balkans, is an absolute win-win uh, situation for the country. Today, it is estimated that uh, a trip from Asia, let's say to the Czech Republic through Piraeus port, is about uh, eight or nine days shorter compared to the same trip uh, through the port of Rotterdam or Hamburg. And this is because freight uh, rail transportation services from Piraeus to the major logistics centers in Central Europe are performed in approximately four days by dedicated uh, block trains, whereas the maritime trip from China to Piraeus is eight to nine days shorter when compared to the North uh, European ports. So in order to transform the Southeast corridor in a really competitive one, what we need is to establish an uh, environmental friendly freight development scheme in the context of a green deal and the model shift to rail that uh, could maximize freight flows from the Greek major ports to the European uh, hinterland through Western Balkan countries. In this context, the Greek government, along with other European member states and of course the European uh, Commission, is committed to promote a common roadmap comprising all the necessary initiatives and support projects such as Corridor X, which apart from deeper transport uh, cooperation, promotes economic stability and mutual understanding in the region. Um, thank you. Uh, and thank you to not only being very focused on the on the answer, but being short in the in, in the time. Um, we would then uh, like to hear back from Gunter um, and, and this is more a question on decarbonization. What role do you see uh, your company and the industry as a whole playing in the decarbonization of long haul freight transportation in Europe? And what would you advise Greece to go about or to do about this effort? Let's say two, two main, uh, two main um, remarks. The first one, Listen to your customers. Your customers are telling what they need. And secondly, it's the infrastructure. And we heard that not only the infrastructure in Greece is, um, I would say, crucial, but also the infrastructure if you go via the, the East Balkan or the West Balkan. Um, you have border crossings, you have um, maintenance work on let's say on the tracks which are not coordinated 
Um, an example, you go from Hamburg to uh, the Romanian border in 48, 50 hours, and then you wait at the Romanian border from between Hungary and Romania, 24, 36 hours. We are in the European Union, but we are not able to open, let's say, borders for the transport of goods on rail, which I don't understand, but okay. Another point is definitely digitization. Thomas was mentioning, I think this is, this will be one of the key topics um, in, in the railway sector. We are still 20 years, 30 years behind uh, of other transport modes. But I would say the learning curve is quite steep. A lot of money is invested, both by the state, but also in the, from the private sector to get um, more and more, um, let's say, productive also in terms of uh, digitization. And the third or fourth point, if you want, and then I'm, I'm done with my, with my states and statements, is the collaboration. The collaboration between the players within the transport chain, which starts at the port, which um, goes via the railway undertaking, the forwarders, the carriers, the wagon, wagon rental companies, and the politics. We cannot think that uh, we can, let's say, overcome all the topics by becoming more efficient, um, leaner. We need the European, but also the local politicians to help on this moving forward on the sector. Thank you. Uh, those four points are uh, very interesting now let me go back to thomas rail cargo group is unique in europe in its experience and expertise operating for rail, rail sectors uh, services across borders so what do you believe are the two to three highest priority areas that should be tackled by greece to minimize cross-border frictions as the ones that we were hearing from from gunter for instance and uh, if you don't mind to be very brief, because I still want to have the last question for, yeah. uh, for the professor. Uh, yes, to be brief is very easy because uh, I mean, it's very difficult to add something. So uh, just a headline. So it's interoperability, uh, the infrastructure, the harmonization of uh, the processes. And then of course, this, this senseful, uh, digitalization this will help uh, to utilize the existing infrastructure because to rebuild or to to extend the infrastructure takes at least 10 years yeah and and we have to start right now because i'm pretty much sure that the ton of of uh, co2 will cost a hell of a money in a very short period especially after the pandemic ends and the green deal starts again short enough very well, very well done. Thank you. <laughs> so, Professor Silas Kopoulos, um, you, you have a lot of experience on um, uh, on train OZ, and we would like to to hear what advice would you give to the institution um, to remain responsive to shipper needs as a way to increase rail freight market. If you don't mind, in one minute. Uh, it's going to be 30 seconds. Uh, really, uh, listen to your customer. That's the main thing. Uh, when we started this business of transporting the containers for Hewlett Packard, that's when we started, we spoke really to the industry and we listened to what they need. And then we honestly look at, uh, looked at ourselves and we, we, to, to, to see whether we can offer the service they needed. And of course, it was not easy. We had to coordinate seven railways, seven railway undertakings in seven countries. Uh, but ultimately, it happened and it worked. Listen to your customers, though. That's the most important thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, uh, we will not have time for one more question to all the panelists, but I think that we have heard enough about the challenges and the opportunities um, that uh, Greece has now um, in, in its hands to move forward. And uh, Deputy Minister, it is indeed a huge challenge in, in, in your hands as well. But what we are hearing is that through collaboration with private sector and bringing the knowledge that uh, the industry can also bring, uh, plus the, the right investments, you will be, you will be able to pull 
uh, uh, through so many challenges. Let us, let us finish uh, this, this session for today, thanking the government of Greece and of course each of you, the panelists and the World Bank for uh, the support that we have here and uh, to, to organizing this session. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank Enjoy. You.